what's the best way to deal with hammer toes on your foot? Uh, that's what we're going to look at this week with Healthy Living. So I, I want to go over this presentation that I give to all my patients about hammer toes. Uh, what are hammer toes to start? Well, basically they're toes that kind of look like hammers or not really. They could be a claw toe. It could be a mallet toe. It could be a hammer toe. But a lot of people get confused. They're really not that complex. Basically, it's one of your toes that curves. And I'm going to make it real simple today, uh, kind of talking about which ones need surgery, which ones don't need surgery, and what are the treatment options for you. So stick around with me over the next few minutes. So what are hammer toes? Basically, they are curving of the toes. You can see here, this is the big toe joint, okay? The metatarsophalangeal joint, not on the big toe, but on the fifth toe. And this one curves and causes a hammer toe. Now, as you can see, it's on the outside of the foot. This tends to be problematic in your shoes. Here is another type of a hammer toe right here. So due to the bunion, the bunion moves over, hammer toe goes up, hammer toe goes over the second toe. You can't just fix the hammer toe. Everyone asks me, can you just fix the hammer toe? No, you have to fix the bunion with the hammer toe. Do all hammer toes need to be fixed? No, they do not. Another example of a hammer toe, this one. Well, with a hammer toe, there's always something called retrograde force. Basically, the force of the either the shoe hitting down or the toe going back. So many people with hammer toe pain have metatarsal phalangeal joint pain, basically pain in the middle of the foot or a stress fracture due to the hammer toe. So let's go a little bit more into it. What are the causes? If you want to get really technical, the simplest way is mechanical instability, an unstable foot or tendon pulling harder on one side or the other. My favorite, biggest culprit is narrow shoes. Basically shoes that are too narrow causing the, the toes to kind of pull in different directions. And then if you want some technical terms, one is called flexor stabilization. When you have a flat foot, you stabilize or flex your toes down. This can also be seen in people that have uh, shoes that are slip-ons, they flex down to stabilize them. And then the last one, which isn't all that common because it's seen in a high arched foot or a tight calf foot, which is called uh, equinus, uh, extensor substitution. So these are people when they walk, the toes kind of go up as they're walking. Now, how long have you had symptoms? This is a key factor. If you've had hammer toes your whole life, greater than three months, it's going to take you a long time to get better. If it's been less than three months, that's not all that common with hammer toes. What are the treatments have you tried? These are things I ask my patients. Have you tried changing your shoes, pads, or supports, or other inserts? And then the most important thing when you're talking about hammer toes, hammer toes are not really all that dangerous if they don't cause pain. So if there's no pain, you don't have to do anything. If they cause pain from rubbing or callusing, most likely you're going to focus on shoe changes. If you have pain to the ball of the foot, you can try different types of pads or inserts. If you have a wound, that's dangerous. Okay, wounds are dangerous. Wounds would be a reason to do a surgery potentially. Um, if you can't be as active, it might be because of shoe gear. Okay, and if you can't find comfortable shoes, might be because you're not choosing the right shoes. Uh, at the end, and actually on the bottom of this video, I'm going to show, show you my shoe buying guide. Basically, it's a free guide I give to my patients on how to get the right shoe uh, for your foot. And then um, people sometimes are scared about surgery. I, want, I don't want you to be scared. I'm going to keep it real simple. At the end, we're going to talk about surgery. So what are the treatment options? You can do more of what you've been doing, which is ignoring it and hoping it goes away. You can do conservative non-surgical treatment, which is what I do 99% of the time. And then you can do surgery. People ask me, doctor, when do I need or when should I consider surgery? I think it's three reasons. One, if you have pain. Two, if you can't find a shoe that's comfortable and you try the shoes on my shoe buying guide. And then three is if you have a wound. If you have a wound, that's a good reason to consider surgery for your hammer toe. This is a little checklist. Uh, this is just a review. I'm going to go over this more at the end, but this is where I usually stop with my patients. But because you're watching, I'm going to go on and explain all these things in detail. So let's go. So the first thing you need to know about hammer toes, hammer toe 101, is there are two types, one that's flexible and one that's rigid. Okay. How can you tell the difference? Well, if you look at your hammer toe, you grab it. This is as podiatrists, we always use our hands to explain toes. I don't quite know why. But if you take your toe, I'm not going to pull my shoe off. If it's curved down like this, and if you can't straighten it, that means it's rigid. That means you've developed arthritis in the joint. If it's flexible, then it's a lot easier to deal with. And you can use these pads and other types of things and even cut the tendon, which is something we'll talk about later, to straighten it out. So you have to figure out first, do I have a flexible or do I have a rigid one? Which one do you have? If it's rigid, it's more challenging. It's been there longer. It tends to cause more ball of foot pain, tends to cause more ulcers and wounds. Flexible is easier. 
Um, hey, my, my, I have fle- I've had flexible hammer toes my whole life. It doesn't matter. If they don't bother you, you don't have to do anything. What's the diagnostic exam we do? Usually it's an x-ray. So an x-ray will show the kind of the, 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 the proximal phalanx. That's this bone. And then the distal phalanx kind of going down, middle and distal going down. That's a hammer toe deformity. You see that on an x-ray. What do you do first? First thing, before you do anything, before you buy all the pads, before you buy, spend all this money, is buy the shoes. Now, I'm going to give you my shoe buying guide underneath here. My two favorite types are LEMS and ultras. So ultras have a foot type bed. There's also something called topos as well, lems as well. These also have a fabric. Do you notice the fabric? The fabric won't let the hammer toe rub as much. Okay. The, the lems specifically, they allow for a tailor's bunion or a bunion on the side and a hammer toe on the top. So they're a great shoe. Ultras are really wide. The main difference uh, is that these have a little bit more support than the lems. And uh, you may have to wear a little bit of an insert in there as well, because they, they tend to be both zero drop and no arch. So it depends on your foot type. You should probably talk to your doctor about that. If you said, hey, doctor, I've tried those shoes and they don't work, the next step would be padding, okay? What pads do I try first? Don't try correct toes starting. Try these little ones, these little ones with a little cushion here and these little fabrics. These are called digi pads. This is called a Budin splint, B-U-D-I-N, and this is called a crest pad. So the crest pad goes underneath the toes to lift them up a little bit. The Budin splint goes on a second toe that's cocked up to push it down. Okay, this is helpful if you have a, only a second toe, only hammer toe, and then has pain in the ball of the foot. This is good if all of them are hammer toes, specifically if you have an ulcer or a wound. And these are correct toes. So these are made to wear with those other shoes that I was talking about. So these anatomic shoes on my shoe buying list, you'll find this. And then I'm also gonna put a list here on my Amazon recommendations, which has all of these things on there as well. Okay, uh, the correct toes are in the shoe buying guide. So those are things you can try second. Uh, if that doesn't work, or if you have pain on the ball of the foot, sometimes we do uh, a, a metatarsal cutout, okay, and in an orthotic. So this is made mostly to reduce the stress on the forefoot and reduce the gripping of your foot. So we do a custom orthotic. These are much better than over-the-counter ones. Um, if you have a really bad, like an ulcer, or you can't walk because of the pain, you may want to consider a walking boot. I don't do walking boots too much unless after surgery. So let's go into some of the advanced treatments. If none of those things work and you're considering surgery, I'm going to make it real simple. If you have a hammer toe that is flexible, okay, and that's cocked up, you can take out a little piece of the bone that's called an arthroplasty, okay? The arthro is joint, and taking out a piece of it is a plasty, so it it takes a, a piece of the joint. Arthrodesis is where you actually fuse it, where you take out the bone and you put a little pin down there that's called a K-wire, and that does come out normally. There are some that they make that are implanted that stay in there, but the ones that I do come out, and that's an arthrodesis. And then the other thing I talked about uh, is the the tenotomy, the flexor tenotomy. So basically, a flexor tenotomy is where you just cut that tendon and it straightens it out. And this is an example on the fifth toe. Sometimes if the toe's been cocked up for a long time, you need to do, uh, it's called a, a Z-plasty of the skin. Basically, you're lengthening the skin because the skin gets shortened over time as it's been cocked up. So those are the surgical treatments. Uh, for hammer toes, once again, you have to talk to your doctor. If you're like just dealing with, um, with hammer toes and you want to learn more, this is my shoe buying guide. I'll put a little link underneath or on this video. I would really uh, recommend you reading that. Here are my Amazon recommendations. They're on my Amazon page. Um, you might like that, but I have made it really simple because I like to teach and I put this all into a foot treatment toolkit. So in this foot treatment toolkit, it has everything all in one place on hammer toes. You're going to find videos, you're going to find books, you're going to find Amazon recommendations, you're going to find the shoe buying guide, all within each section based on your condition. So it's ways to treat it. Once again, if that is not enough, you can certainly come to see me if you live in Massachusetts. Um, and there are other information on Dr. Pelto website. Once again, I hope you guys found this beneficial. Let me know uh, in the comments section uh, what questions you have. I will try to answer them or give you the resources that will help you. Okay, thanks, guys.